We have our snakes shooting, we have a hero shooting, we got all kinds of good things going on. However, um, in most games, you get more than one life. In the game that we've created, if we die, you can see that the character goes away and there's really no ending, you know, there's no new life. So that's what we're going to focus on in this video. And to do that, similar to how we imported the simple timer class, which allowed us to control things with time, we are going to now import the counter class. And the counter, when I hit OK, what you're going to notice is it's going to appear under the actor. And you can see right here it says the counter belongs to the actor subclass. It extends the actor. So if I hit OK, you'll notice that it shows up here, not down here. And that's because, remember, simple timer is just a class on its own and it doesn't kind of take from any other class. Whereas the counter, if I hold down shift, is something that I can put in the world. If I click, then I can put a counter in the world like so. And so I'm going to actually put a counter in the world that is going to reflect the number of lives that the hero has. That's, that's the goal here. So I am going to reset and I'm going to go back to my world. And if you'll remember, my world is where we set up the world. And so that's where we put a hero and we put an enemies um, and we, these are the coordinates of where they go. And I'm going to just add a little more space. I'm going to copy this line of code, which I know adds an enemy to the screen, but I want to add a counter to the screen. So if I do that and run it, you'll see that, okay, great, I have a counter, um, but it's in the wrong place. I want it to be up here. And so up here, remember, this is zero, zero. So I'm only going over about 50 and down maybe about 20. And so I'm going to put a 50 here and a 20 here. And now you can see that I have my counter where I want it. Fantastic. Now the counter says zero, but I want this to reflect the lives that my hero has. So I don't want it to say zero, I want it to say three. And so here is where I want to set the counter to be a certain value. And here's where we run into a problem, because I put the new counter on the screen, but how do I set the value of the counter when I don't really have any way to refer to it? What I mean by that is, and this might be a strange example, but if you were to go by a dog, you would probably give the dog a name so that you could call the dog. But if you didn't give the dog a name, how would you, you would have a dog, but how would you refer to it? So what I've done here is I've made a new counter, but I don't have any way to refer to it. So what I'm going to do, and you've seen this before, if I go to, say, the enemy, right here I have some things that belong to the enemy. Every enemy that I create has its own shot timer, has its own move value. These are things, characteristics of each enemy. So for the counter, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the counter here. So right here, I'm going to put counter, and since it's counting hero lives, I'll call it hero life count equals new counter. So what this has done, this line here creates a new counter, but it stores it in kind of a variable name. It's, this is really an object called hero life count. And what I want to do here is not put another new counter on the screen. I just made a new counter right here. I want to put the counter that I made here called hero life count on the screen. And this line does exactly that. So up here, it says, okay, in the world, we're going to have a new counter called hero life count. That's the name of a counter. And here we're putting it on the screen. And why is that important? Because on the next line, I'm going to type hero life count dot and then control space and all these different things pop up. These are all the different things I can do with the counter. And one of those is set value. And I want to set the value to 3, like so. And now, 
you can see the value is set to three. Great. All right, we have a counter on the screen. How do we make it so that when the hero gets hit, this value goes down? Well, we want to think to ourselves, where in our code does the hero get hit? And the answer is, it's in the enemy bullet. So I go to the enemy bullet, and I look at the code, and I go down right here. This is the code that says, okay, did the enemy bullet hit a hero? If it did, then we remove the hero, and we remove the bullet. So we already have the code for where we want it to happen and when we want it to happen, but we just want to add some things inside these brackets. What we want to do is we want to decrease the hero life count by one. So right here, I want to refer to hero life count. So if I go back to enemy bullet and type hero life count dot and then control space, you'll notice that nothing happens. It's like it doesn't know it exists. And the reason is because we are coding in the enemy bullet class. I need a way to say, hey, I want to get at the hero life count that I know exists in my world. So I'm going to put two very important words in front of this public, static. And what these words do is they make the counter available to all of the classes. So what that means is now from enemy bullet, I am able to access hero life count. The way I do that is I type my world because that's the world where hero life count can be found. So if I put my world dot hero life count, as long as I have public static in front like that, watch what happens. If I put the dot back and now control space, ah, now the computer realizes that I'm trying to get at the counter that lives in my world and I want to add. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, I thought we wanted it to go down. We do. We want it to go down by one, which is the same as adding negative one. So this line of code says, all right, if the enemy bullet hits the hero, we want the life count to go down by one. Let's see if it works. Can't die when I need to. <laughs> there we go. All right, notice it went down to two. Okay, great, it worked. Now, we have a problem because obviously we need the hero to be on the screen. The hero shouldn't be gone. And so I can go back into the code and I can say, you know what? We don't want to remove the hero. However, well, we do want to remove the hero at some point. We want to remove the hero if my world dot hero life count. And by the way, you may notice a shortcut there. If I type HE and then hit control space, it will finish it for me because hero life count is the only thing accessible in the in my world. So if I type if my world dot hero life count dot get value. So this gets the value of the life count. If the life count gets to zero, well then I do want to remove the hero from the screen. So this is a condition, but this I want to happen no matter what, which is why I'm not including it in the brackets. I want to remove the enemy bullet even if the, get val or the value of the counter is not zero. So I'm going to run this. And you're going to see it won't work quite the way we want it to yet. But I'll try to get... No, oh, ah! There, there, there. See? It's working. And there we go. It worked. Do that one more time. Hit, hit. So we lost a life. Lost a life. And there we go. Now it's gone. So it's getting there. Ideally, when we get hit with a bullet, we may want to put it back into the starting position or something like that. Um, but we've now made it such that 
when um, the hero gets hit, he doesn't disappear right away, and we have a life counter on the screen.